Hey, I'm Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. Today I'm going to be demonstrating rough-in residential work. Uh, we're going to be nailing on a one-gang box, terminating non-metallic cable, also known as Romex. I'm going to walk you through the steps, I'm sharing codes and best practices. First, I've prepped myself for the job. I've offloaded unnecessary weight. I've got my parts pouch here loaded with the right equipment and I'm ready to rock. It's important that you don't carry around too much weight on the job site. You're going to throw off your hips, you're going to stress your back. Uh, you're going to be lean and mean, prepped for the task at hand, not generalized to every task under the sun. Here I've got a jig. This is made out of half inch plywood. Half inch is a critical dimension because residential drywall is half inch thick. And I want to flush my box to the face of the drywall. So when I'm finishing out the project, the yoke of my receptacle, the mounting plate of my receptacle, sits flush to the face of my box. That's critical. I want a good, clean, tight fit. I don't want any slop in that receptacle. <clears throat> this jig is also customized such that it is the height of the box and it is the thickness of a two by four drywall stud. This is inch and a half. Makes it easy to hold and 15 inches from rough floor to bottom of box. That's gonna be our preferred mounting height. Actually, in this circumstance, this is an extensive $25,000 rewire of an existing house. And so we're gonna be mounting all of our boxes to the standard that is present, which is 12 inches. That's kind of an older standard, um, but for demonstration purposes, our preferred new construction standard is 15 inches. So that's what I'm using today. I'm gonna flush my jig to the floor. I'm gonna reverse my box. I'm gonna flush my, the palm of my hand to the face of my box and the jig I'm using a fiberglass hammer. I'm gonna set my top nail, set my bottom nail. Drive my box flush. It is a code requirement that the box be secured to the framing without any wiggle or jiggle. Now I've got my 14-2 non-metallic cable, also known as Romex. It carries a hot and neutral conductor with the ground. I'm going to be demonstrating drilling holes and terminating this cable in simplistic fashion. There are a variety of tools available, but I like to maintain the specific tooling for the task at hand, but also tools that can perform the task at hand um, with a minimal number of specialized tools that minimizes my tool crib. It also streamlines the process, and I'm not carrying as much in and out of the job set every day. And I'm accustomed to the location of each tool and um, the variety of uses. I'm going to be intentional where I drill my hole. A couple of things. One, this box is not equipped with a clamp. It is strictly a knockout in the back of the box. Knockout, punched out with a large flathead screwdriver. Again, extremely versatile tool. I'm going to locate my hole through the stud in specific fashion. I want to be more than 12 inches above the box so I have the space for a gradual curve, a staple to secure the wire, and then entry at the top of the box. I also want to locate my hole in the center of the stud. There's a code requirement that I need inch and a quarter clearance from the face of the stud to the nearest edge of my hole or cable. So I'm using a three quarter inch bit. I could go up to one inch, but I want a little bit of safety factor on either side, a buffer, so that that wire is protected from drywall screws, picture hangers in the center of my stud. There it goes. Now I've got my 14-2 positioned on a wire dispenser, so it's gonna roll off smooth for me. I'm pulling it through. I'm tucking it in. Got my utility knife. I want eight inches, that's the span of a man's hand. Eight to nine inches. I want to be consistent. I'm going to strip the outer jacket of the cable. Good clean finish. And I don't want any stray sheathing or outer jacket. I don't want to nick or damage the conductors in any way. I want to preserve their integrity. And then I'm going to locate that staple such that I have what's called a service loop or a seven. We're using non-metallic staples today. Non-metallic staples are less likely to damage your conductor. You don't want to drive this like a railroad spike. You want to be easy. All you have to do is secure the cable. Should not be.
under any kind of strain condition. So now I've got a service loop. If there is damage that occurs at any point, maybe a roto zip inside the box because I haven't tucked my wires far enough inside the box, whatever the case may be, I've got that service loop or seven, I can pull a little more cable into the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tuck my cable. I'm not gonna stuff it. I'm gonna fold it strategically two times and I'm gonna safely tuck it to the back of the box. I'm gonna bring that service loop or seven up to the center of the stud so it's protected as possible. And that's it. I have spaced a one gang residential nail on box. I have adjusted it for half inch drywall. You'll note that the tabs on the side of the box are set to 3 8 of an inch. You don't want to use that or your box won't be flush with drywall and you'll have difficulties when mounting your device. So half inch, 15 inches to floor. I've terminated my wire. I have 8 inches, again 8 inches from the point of entry measured along the length of the wire to the first point at which the cable is secured. And then I've left myself a little bit of latitude to my hole. I have a 3 quarter inch hole and if my hole is too close to the face of framing, then I'm using a UL listed nail plate. That is strategically the width of the stud, 16, 1 16 inch steel to protect that wire from drywall screws or the like. Next, we're gonna be continuing the wiring path to a three gang switch box. Similar concept, but a variety of things to keep in mind.